Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right. But he gets in sticky messes just the same. He's curious and speaks his mind. But trouble's never far behind. It's Paddington Bear. He's one of a kind. I'm Paddington Bear. As you know, Aunt Lucy, things are always happening to me. I'm just that sort of bear. For instance, the other day, when Mr. Curry asked me to help him pick crab apples for his jelly, I found myself whew, out on a limb. Bear, get down this instant before you break my branch. His branch? I'm more worried about my leg. I was just trying to get that ripe apple up there, Mr. Curry. Perhaps I can help you make the jelly now. Bears are good at making jelly. I'll get that apple myself. And don't forget to clean up after yourself. Mr. Curry is forever wanting to get something for nothing. Mrs. Bird calls it taking advantage of others. But on that day, I suspect Mr. Curry wishes he'd managed without me. This patient is suffering from hobbidacolitis. I'm afraid this doesn't look good. What began as a simple trip to the hospital to get his leg examined turned into a two-week stay for Mr. Curry. Hobbidacolitis. What did he say? Hobbidacolitis? Nurse! Nurse! Can't you water those plants quietly? I can't hear Grant Dexter. Hmm. We're going to have to operate, but first, we need to put this patient in an ice bath to lower his body temperature. Maybe you can help cure Mr. Curry, Dr. Grant Dexter. No one knows what's wrong with him. That Mr. Curry is taking advantage of Paddington, playing on the poor bear's guilt. If you ask me, Mr. Curry will be coming out of the hospital when it suits him, and not a minute before. <laughs> He has a relapse every time the doctor says he's getting better. After two weeks' worth of visits, everyone had had enough. It was finally my turn to pay Mr. Curry a visit. Oh. I had always wanted to visit a hospital. Oh. So long as I wasn't a patient. Excuse me. I'm looking for Mr. Curry. I decided I had better find Mr. Curry myself. Oh! I soon found an office that was just like the one Grant Dexter had in the Daredevil Doctor. It even had Grant Dexter's spinning chair. Whoa! Hello? Hello? I thought my one thirty appointment was cancelled. I'm sorry. I'm Dr. Heinz. Now, what seems to be the problem? I think it's my head. Of course. Why else would you need to see a psychiatrist? A psychiatrist? I'm the head man, after all. The head man? Good. Since you're in charge, perhaps you know where Mr. Curry is. Suppose we begin by playing a game of word association. Each time I call out a word, you give me another one with the opposite meaning, right? Wrong. Hold on. Let go. No, no. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's start again. I'll count down. One, two, three, go. 
Stop! We finished! We started! Why did I ever get into this business? I should have my head examined! Perhaps you would like to talk about it, Mr. Hines. He wore a blue Delphi coat and a funny red hat! Finding quickly! Soon, the whole hospital would be looking for a bear in a blue duffel coat and red hat. But they wouldn't be looking for Dr. Paddington Brown! Yes, well, we're just uh, missing one visitor for our international forum. Ah, uh, here you are. And now, I am Sir Archibald. Uh, this is Dr. Hasegawa from Japan, uh, Dr. Madanda from India, Dr. Michaud from France, and uh, Dr. Petricelli from Italy. Dr. Petricelli from Italy? But my name is Paddington Brown, and I'm from Darkest Peru. Darkest Peru? Oh, what a learning experience this will be, Dr. Brown. We'll start off with a real mystery illness. No sign of injury, and yet this patient claims he can't move his leg. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps there's some South American cure that can help this man. <laughs> what do you make of these x-rays, Dr. Brown? Oh. Hmm. Mm-hmm. As pictures, they're not much to look at. All they show a lot of old bones. Old bones? Uh, amazing! The patient looks better already. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! My leg! I seem to have suffered a relapse. Uh, yes. Uh, but what is he suffering from, Doctor? I think it's... Hobodocolitis. Ah! Hobodocolitis? Uh, tell me, is it possible to operate? Oh, yes. Dr. Grant Dexter does it all the time. But I shall need a bath of ice. And a box to stand on. And... I'm not sure, Sir Archibald. We may have to leave the patient on ice until after the next episode of Daredevil Doctor. Keep that bear away from me. Stay away. I'm fine. I want to go home. Let me out of here! <laughs> Extraordinary. Well, there's a lot to be said for the old methods of treatment, uh, Dr. Brown. There? Sir Archibald said he could think of a few more patients I might be able to cure. But I still felt guilty about Mr. Curry. I tried to make it up to him by doing some odd jobs. Picking up here and there. I think I should have sent him a get well card instead. One of the nicest things about France, Mr. Gruber, is the bread. It's so long. It's like getting 20 buns for the price of one. Ah! Mm. Now remember, Mr. Brown, as my assistant, I expect you to find some interesting goings on for my book. The world and its wonders. That's why we've come to France. Yes, Mr. Gruber. I am honored to help. Oh, Mr. Gruber, mon ami. Venez, come in for some fresh croissant. And you too, Monsieur Le Bel. Thank you, Monsieur Dupont. Tour de France. Tour, tour, tour. To go around. To go around. France. On a bicycle. Mr. Gruber asked me to keep my eyes open for any interesting subjects for his book. And what could be more interesting than people going around France on bicycles? Back in England, they'd take the bus. Ah, yes. The Tour de France. It is an event not to be missed. You mean you already know about it, Mr. Gruber? Yes, Mr. Brown. Don't you agree, Monsieur Dupont? The tour deserves mention in my book. Bien sûr, of course. Twenty days, a grueling race. A race? But I thought it was a tour. It is both. And tomorrow, it comes through our village. It is our moment of glory. Afterwards, people will forget San Castile ever existed. But today, oh, today, the whole of France will see us on television. 
And to think, Mr. Brown, we shall be a part of it. Mr. Gruber said we would be a part of the Tour de France. But how could I do that if I didn't have a bicycle? Aha! My problem was solved. I will lend you my tricycle, but there is one small condition. Some conditions aren't so small. Merci, mademoiselle. Now, what's keeping Mr. Brown? Perhaps he's in his room? I hope my assistant is finding out some interesting facts about the Tour de France. Luckily for Mr. Gruber, he didn't realize that that's exactly what I was going to do. Cleaning and oiling a tricycle is a lot harder than I thought it would be, especially the sort with three wheels. Ah, now for a little oil. Good as new. What shall I do next? Hmm. Now, where did this go again? Well, it can't be very useful, or it would fit somewhere. Now for a test ride. Tricycling is hard work. And to think people ride all around France. And not just in their rooms. Now for a good night's sleep. Oops. Another problem. I finally found a way to lie in bed without leaving paw marks all over the sheets. Ah, Monsieur Le Bear is very good at making messes, no? Yes, it is one of his strong suits. But where is he? The Tour de France is on its way to the village. Poor Mr. Brown. He's going to miss everything, and he so likes being in the thick of things. It's funny how Mr. Gruber knows what's going on, even when he's not there to see it for himself. I don't think I could ever have been more in the thick of things than I was at that moment. <gasps> Mr. Brown? Monsieur Le Bear? Oh, Monsieur Le Bear! That's plus it! Vite, plus vite, oui, plus vite. Faster! Tu vas gagner! Oh, Monsieur Le Bear, you should not be in the race. Oh. But how can I be part of the Tour de France if I'm not in it? That's it. Don't fall back. Oh, mais c'est pas possible. Non. Bravo, Monsieur Le Bear. Oh! I'm winning. I'm winning. Hurry to the town square. Quel honneur. Monsieur Le Bear is bringing glory to our village. I had done such a good job oiling my tricycle that I didn't even have to pedal. So... That extra part was the brake lever. Help! Whoa! Yeah! Yeah! Help! Yeah! Help! Help! Your brakes, Mr. Brown, use your brake lever. I can't. It's in my hotel room. Monsieur Le Bear, through here. Merci, Monsieur Dupont. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brown! Mr. Brown! I'm all right! Monsieur Le Bear! Monsieur Le Bear! But I think I'm in trouble again. But far from being in trouble, Mr. Paddington Brown is now a local hero because he helped put Saint Castile on the map. Now, people come from all over to see the room where the famous Monsieur Le Bear stayed. Monsieur Dupont sells many buns as supplied to Monsieur Le Bear. Isn't it wonderful how everything works out for the best? It is, Mr. Gruber. And I have some unusual souvenirs for my scrapbook. I just
just wish my tire would stay put. Dear Aunt Lucy, yesterday evening the Browns told me that I'd be attending my very first charity ball. All I needed to do was find something to wear. And, of course, learn how to dance. Which is easier said than done. Oh, was that the door, Henry? No, Mary. That was Paddington. Only a bear would do the tango at half past six on a Saturday morning. Don't be cross with him, dear. He was having trouble with his turns last night. And I'm having trouble with my sleep this morning. Yes? Good morning, Mr Brown. Dancing is harder than it looks. My legs keep getting tangled up. Yes, I see what you mean, Paddington. I think I'd better ask Mr Gruber for some help. That's a very good idea. Over the years, Mr Gruber has advised me on lots of topics and I was sure he would be able to offer a word or two on the subject of dancing. <laughs> I didn't know you could dance, Mr Gruber. Everyone is doing it, Mr Brown. Why, anyone who is anyone is going to tonight's ball. I'm afraid they don't have many ballrooms in darkest Peru, Mr Gruber. So I don't know how to d d dance. Mind you, it's a long time since I tripped the light fantastic. It's the tripping part that worries me. Then I, I have just the thing for you. This is by a very famous dancer called Miguel Vasquez. He's judging tomorrow night's competition. Learning to dance in the beginning stage You can follow the steps on the printed page Two to the left, one to the right If you learn these steps, you can dance all night First we'll learn a clockwise turn That means turning to the right Let's not miss the counterclockwise twist That means turning to the left Make your partner grin with a clockwise spin To the right once more, keep your feet on the floor Clockwise means turn to the right Counterclockwise means turn to the left If you learn these directions, your left from your right You'll move with ease and dance all night Twist counterclockwise and two steps to the right. I'm going to put my foot down. Some of those footprints are marked clockwise, others are marked counterclockwise. It isn't easy trying to work out which ones to follow and watch the clock at the same time. Learning to dance? Which is easier said than done. Paddington, let me show you something. That's it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You aren't as stiff as the hat rat, Mr. Brown. Henry! Ah, yes. Um, <coughs> well, uh, yes, I, I think those are enough pointers, Paddington. Something told me that that was the last time Mr. Brown and I would dance together for quite some time. Mr. Brown, so pleased to meet you. I'm Mrs. Smith Tomley. I'm hosting tonight's charity ball. That's Mr. Vasquez and his dance team. I see you've been doing some homework. <laughs> if Mr. Vasquez has trouble with his steps, he'll know where to come. I didn't say he has got trouble. I only said if. Don't worry, Mr. Vasquez. I'm coming. It's all on page 45. Go away. You're ruining my demonstration. Go away. Wait. That sounds like a... like a fire alarm. Oh, no. Fire! Fire! <laughs> It's all right. It's only my alarm clock. Two minutes. We've only been here two minutes. Uh, 
And now it's time for the dance competition. And I want everyone to join in. The first prize is this magnificent food basket. All this talk of food just made me hungry. And since no one was going to ask me to dance, I decided to have a marmalade sandwich instead. You heard what Mr. Vasquez said. Everyone has to join in. Thank you very much, Mrs. Smith Chumley. I'd love to. <sighs> oh, all right. Do you come here often? No. And I'd be obliged if you'd find someone else to put your paws. I can't. I'm afraid I'm stuck in your straps. Ah! Ah! My back! There's some hideous creature crawling down my back. Let me see. It's not a hideous creature. It's only some marmalade chunks. Marmalade chunks? Just look at them. My dance lesson with Paddington certainly paid off. If you twist a little more, I might be able to grab it. I didn't teach him that step. What form? What agility? What rhythm? I think I can reach it if you bend over. Bravo! I say, bravo! I believe we have found our winners! Oh, you two must join my dance team for our final demonstration. Thank you very much, Mr. Vasquez. But I think I shall need another marmalade sandwich. And I know just what to do with a food hamper. Lots of people ask me where I learned to dance. I told them all you need is an alarm clock, plenty of practice, and one marmalade sandwich with extra chunks. <laughs> oh, what a Sabrino I have. 